Hey guys, this is Gonis Car here with another Exos Heroes video. In today's video, I want to talk about speed and specifically talk about turn order when it comes to the Holy Dragon Grounds. That's something I've been very curious about for quite a while. So I figured out, I took the time, uh, learned a lot about how it actually works and wanted to share it with you guys. So with that, let's get into it. So I definitely think there's a lot of practical uses really understanding turn order, especially when it regards to your characters and the dragon and then understanding all the different things that are going to affect that and how you can use that to your advantage. Okay, so the first thing I want to explain is just speed. Really actually pretty straightforward is just how quick you go is the order in which you're gonna go. There's no like turn meter and percentages and stuff in a lot of these turn-based games. It's just gonna be how fast you go, you're gonna go first and then the next person, the next person after that and then it will. What, how you can actually change speed is first thing, each kind of class of character, for example, like Bathory is like a mage. She's going to be around the 60 range. You got Rudely here. He's kind of like this bruiser style. He's going to be about 110. Garf is a tank, but he's not a provoking tank. He's a protect one, so he's a little quicker. Whereas someone like Illum or Igas here, he's a block tank, so he's slower, as you'll see here and the he's about 30 speed base you'll start to learn that characters have certain speeds like okay you know reed marie she's like an assassin style character or or i should say she's more like a focus fire character like rara so she's going to be really quick and then once you see what classes there are for speed you'll be able to adjust the speed a pretty small from that point to gear and if the character's fused or not those are like the the ways to adjust speed and then speed varies based on the quality of the gear too so for example, L, the quality of the gear and how well it rolled. You can check here in the Iron Forge to see the, the actual range of how well a, a piece of gear can roll. The fastest yeah, a faded piece could go is four. But here, let's go to the Airship Forge and I'll show you. So for example, we go to armor and then you could ch check here and then just hold it, hold over one of the pieces. So this hand piece is a you know top row set. Faded gear could go from 3.36 to four depending on what you're trying to do you might want someone faster you might want someone slower and just keep that in mind that there's a range there when you're actually looking at actually changing your turn order what you're going to want to do is you're going to it's going to come down to not necessarily like a lot of these games is you can make whatever character you want the fastest whatever character you want the slowest whereas in this game is you're really at the mercy of the type of character you have and then you can make minute changes from there so for example healers Pretty much every single healer in this game is always going to be at a really slow speed. For example, you know, Anastasia, or let's go to Anastasia here, going to be at that's 30, 32 speed. The only characters that are really slower than that uh, or in the same range as that is going to be these block tanks like Illum or Digas. So, and then, but pretty much everyone else goes beyond that. That's why a lot of times if you're having issues with multiple healers, um, especially in the dragon, it's like a heal and then another heal right after is because they're so slow. There's, it doesn't matter how much speed you put on them. They're, you're, they're just going to go right one after another. So we're, we're going to talk about like ways to address that here in a second, but that's just kind of how it works. So like when you're actually adjusting speed in this game, you want to look at whatever class of character you have. Like for example, here, let me pull up this list. Here's this list uh, of characters that is my turn order for a team. And then I already know that there's nothing I can do to make sure that to make Rudely not go or go before Reed Marie. Abella is never going to be able to go faster than Rudely. It just doesn't matter. Uh, you, I believe even if I took off all the top row set, then you get characters like this, like Bathory, Bernadette, and Chadi. They're all in the 60 range. So you can see like Chadi's 63. Bernadette is Bathory. She's 66. So then now you're at a point where you can maybe manipulate it and 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 move the speeds around. Just, I just wanted to, I think that's really core concept when it comes to actually adjusting speed there's really not much you can do you're at the mercy of whatever class character you you have to work with so then now let's talk about the how the speed works on the dragon and the dragon simply works every three turns so you have three three turns go then the dragon will go okay but then there's certain thresholds that you hit for damage that will will reset the turn meter from or reset the turn order back to the, the your fastest character. And those are going to be the uh, the phase changes in the dragon. So th that's when uh, your 
It doesn't matter what happens once you hit a certain threshold. So for example, 26,200 here, let me see if I saw this infographic. When it, when it comes to the thresholds for Dragon, see, see these phases? So phase one, once you hit 26,800 damage, then the turn order is gonna reset back to the beginning. And then once you hit 80,200 on phase two, then the turn meter is going to reset to the beginning and you're going to take a ton of damage because that's when he does his dragon breath. That's the thing that you need a head dragon knight passive to reduce the damage because if you don't have that being reduced by 50%, it doesn't matter how good your gear is. You're just going to get dumpstered. So, um, and then lastly, I mean, and then into phase three, that's just the end of the encounter. So there's no need to actually, you know, adjust speed for that. Okay. But, what does that mean? What does that mean for you? Like that the turn order is going to ch reset at these points. And so what, what that actually, it matters a ton. And then if there's, if you've ever had times where you felt like your uh, healers are not never going or your, you know, Chadi is never going or so, something like that. What, what the issue is happening is the dragon is, is going uh, every three turns but then right before Chadi can go or right before like Anastasia or Digas can go, what's happening is you're hitting the threshold. So then it resets it all over and you take a ton of damage. Then you have to go all, you have to work your way all the way back. So then what happens is then now you have to do these three moves again, because it, it that's the turn order. It's, it's read rudely abelia in my case in your case it could be different so i highly recommend after doing this i highly recommend this is if you're going to do the dragon list all your characters list all their speed and then you'll really start to understand exactly who's going to go and you're going to see it you're going to be like okay you know this person goes and then every time once a character starts a chain like every the first character that goes after the dragon that that's going to be the start of it. And then just the next two characters right under, then you'll know you can actually plan for stuff and actually try to theory craft your team around it. My recommendation is to always have some kind of healer or damage mitigation in your team in, in each of your three uh, groups here. So for example, this you have Reed Marie rudely and Obelia. And in this case, it's FC rudely just if there, in case there's confusion, FC rudely gives team, uh, you know stats Obelia gives team stats so that's two characters that are doing damage mitigation then in my next group of characters I, I at least have Chadi and then in my next group of characters I have Digas and Anna so it doesn't matter what happens because like let, let's say for example you're you're going against the dragon and then in phase two Bernadette hits for a lot of damage and resets uh, the dragon and you know is going to hit hit the dragon breath and do a ton of damage and you're at a really low state if you didn't have a healer or a damage mitigator at every one of these phases what's going to happen is you're going to go right back to uh this one reed's going to go and then let's say you had like rachel and zeon then no one's going to heal no one's going to do damage damage mitigation nothing dragon's going to go and then you're then bath is going to go bernadette's going to go and then maybe chadi maybe chadi won't even have her you know, it, it just depends on how you set it up, but you always want to have in your group of three, you always want to have at least a, some kind of damage mitigation because if, you know, you only have two healers, like let's say, oh, I put two healers in my team, I'm fine. You're probably not because they're all the way down here. So then what's happening is all these characters are going to go, dragon's going to go, all these characters go, dragon's going to go, and then you just screwed yourself, you're just dead. So uh, that's why turn meter is just so important when it comes to this and then setting up your team because this is always going to be dependent on your characters because the second the second you add another character to this chain it could uh, change everything like let's say I, I added a character that fit in between bernadette and uh chadi here now chadi doesn't get her do her thing for two dragon moves so then that completely throws up your rotation like let's say i threw in a character like a healer that goes instead of digas i put another healer there and goes right in front of anna now it really ruins potential things you can do because you're just going to go heal, heal, which is really frustrating because you just overheal. That's why in this example, there's so many different versions of healing. You got defense up, you got shields, you have uh, HP sharing, you have, uh, you know, uh, Anna with, with the actual heal at the very end here. My recommendation, if you're going to add another healer, because I, this is nine characters, I, I've just been testing it out, but what I would recommend doing is always make the, 
and because we talked about earlier how we can't really change the turn meter of the actual healers too much because they're all in that really low uh, amount. What I recommend doing is making sure that the healers are not in your same group. So, for example, instead of having you, you got to make sure your turn meter works out to where like Kaya would be another healer. She's in the second group here. So then or the fourth group, I should say. So it, you have three characters, three characters, three characters. They'll go. Now you have the dragon go. Then Kaya goes heals. So you have Anna heal. You take the image. Kaya heals. Then now the turn. Then it resets to Kaya. Or, or I should say it changes to Kaya. Uh, Reed Marie rudely. Dragon goes now. Then Obelia, Bathory, Bernadette. You know. So you you want to keep keep that in mind. Maybe now that I think about it, it's probably better to have Chadi in between here. What would happen is then once you have this reset, then it's going to go. Well, first of all, I should say, if you have Chani in the middle, it's still good because you'll have the heals right here in the normal rotation. But once the rotation gets a little off center, because now you had Kaya go and then now Reed has to go and then Ruli has to go, and then the dragon will go in between because it's every three turns. Then it's going to be Abelia, Bathory, Chadi. Then it's going to be Bernadette, Garf, Digas. Then it's going to be Anna, Kaya. You mean, you know how it staggers? But making sure, making sure not only your team has a heal in your three set, but then your team has a heal in your staggered three set if you actually run 10 characters. So, so that's going to make a massive difference in your runs. And then you got to keep in mind too that once you hit those thresholds, like I was talking about here on this on this infographic, the thresholds here, you want to make sure that, that you're ready for this, the switch because if you hit the 80,000, it now, now resets the turn meter all the way, or the turn order all the way back to uh, the beginning where it's going to be how it normally is where it, at the start. So uh, after doing this, uh, I thought it was very interesting. I thought it was very useful, especially for planning because, and then just to make it as most legit as possible, sorry if this light is bothering you, but make it as most legit as possible. What I ended up doing is I set the, I, I put no dragon characters in my team. So when I was uh, play testing this, I absolutely no dragon characters just to, Test not only is this concept working in this sense, it, or is this actually going to be survivable um, without them? And I wanted to actually test the turn meter uh, for the video. So here, let, let's go to the dragon, and then you you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. I'll kind of narrate through all those examples I brought up, but I wanted to bring those up first so you're ready for them because I'm going to be going really quick when it comes to actually in here. Okay, so I'm going to do a team of nine instead of Kaya. You know, on the list here, I had it to where. You're, you're seeing we're just going to be doing these nine characters here you're going to see be able to actually follow along and go from uh you're going to see like reed then rudely then obelia then the dragon's going to go then it's going to be about three bernadette chadi because i haven't changed it even though it'd probably be better after looking at it if well it doesn't matter in this scenario but it is better um if you're running 10 characters and then garf digas anna okay so uh, i know a lot of stuff i'm throwing at you here but I think this is interesting and uh, is going to definitely help with building comps for you know people, especially if you don't have a lot of the dragon blood characters. The only issue is I the the furthest I can get to on the dragon at least today is without any dragon blood characters is about two hundred and seventy thousand. I think I had a run there. I recorded all the runs. I just don't have enough damage in phase three. The wraith proccing is really beneficial, and not having that. You really start to miss it. So let's follow this. So we got the counter there. So now you got Bathory, just like the in the order. So it's gonna be Bathory, and then it's gonna be Bernadette. Remember, I switched it just because it would be better, but that's not actually how it is. And then we got Chadi. She, she goes at the end of the chain, which is fantastic. So then he ends up doing his move here. No one takes damage because we got the shield. Now it's Garf, and then Digas is gonna give the health. And then lastly, we're going to have Anna. Now he's almost. Done with his threshold. Uh, looks like the damage is 27. So you'll see it. Now let me get it out of the way. So 26,800, just like I was saying. Now it reset. Then, see, now Reed Marie goes. So then uh, Rudely goes. Boom. So then now Abelia goes. So now it's a little staggered. Because what ended up happening was it reset. It goes, it resets, and then it, it moved it down. 
And you'll notice uh, that dodges happen constantly with casters. Incredibly frustrating. This is an example of the stagger that I was talking about. And so then now you got Garf, Gigas, and then we go, and then Anna, and then now it's going to be Anna, Reed Marie, and then uh, what was it? Oh, and then Rudely. So Reed Marie, and then Rudely, and then Blitz. See the dot procced, so now it's going to do the the dragon breath, and then it resets the turn order again. So then, if Reed Marie is alive, she's going to go first. So she's going, but then just had to auto because of that passive that silences, and you know how it does one damage. So that that's what happened there. I think that gives a good example of how this works. I know it's kind of all over the place, but uh, more than happy to answer questions in the comments down below. Uh, when it comes to this kind of stuff, I know there's a lot of a uh, lot more to it. I'm probably going to do a follow up to this with like an infographic. And then also I, I got a, a video on the way. I'm trying to be able to beat the dragon without any dragon blood characters. It's probably going to take a ton of gear, but uh, I think it'd be really cool to have for the community a uh, being able to beat the the dragon uh, or the holy dragon grounds without requiring these these dragon characters because the passive is just so uh, powerful for this. So it's like pretty discouraging for people if you don't have one um, and then you look at this and it's just out of reach for most people. So I figured it would be a fun video to do. That's it. That's it for me, guys. Hopefully you guys found this interesting. Hopefully you guys found this useful. Uh, you can take this to your Holy Dragon Grounds and actually apply it yourself. Um, but, you know, again, like I was saying, hit me up down in the comments below if you have any questions and you guys have a good one. Peace.